Hi, welcome to Guidelines for Developing UI Copol. My name is Chava and I'm a full stack software engineer and tech lead at Google. Today I'm going to talk about common guidelines and best practices which I find useful for designing the component hierarchy of a web application. In the past two years, I've been implementing and maintaining a complex UI model. The guidelines and best practices that I will share here in this talk are the lessons that I've learned from my own personal experience. I'm also going to talk about Ninja Warrior, which is my favorite TV show these days. I'm sure you all know it. Each episode has a series of obstacles and candidates that complete the obstacles at the best time move to the next level of the competition. I've built an application that stores the results of every candidate in each uh, obstacle in the series of obstacles of a specific episode. And uh, throughout this talk, I will analyze uh, the component hierarchy of this application. So what are UI components? UI components are the building blocks of a web application. The basic components are the inputs, the drop-downs, the buttons, and so on. They are usually part of a design system that is shared across the organization. In this slide, you can see the basic components of Angular material. This is the uh, application I told you about. You can see here the selection of candidates, and for each selected candidate, it is possible to view and update the results in each and every obstacle of the specific episode. You can see highlighted the basic components that are used in this application. Custom components are composition of basic components. You can see highlighted here a custom component that is responsible for presenting and updating the results in a single obstacle, you can see that this custom component is indeed a composition of basic components. Custom components can also be a composition of other custom components as highlighted here. Angular and React are both UI frameworks that are component-based, meaning that everything is a component. However, it is up to the software engineer to decide what is the hierarchy of components and how the entire application is separated into multiple components. And this is what we are going to uh, discuss today. So let's start with the guidelines. I'm going to talk today about those five guidelines. Some of them are clean code guidelines that can be applied to UI code as well, and others are UI uh, dedicated guidelines. The examples I will show are uh, implemented in Angular, however, the guidelines are relevant to any component-based UI framework. The first guideline is second single responsibility principle. Each UI component should do one thing and do it well. The advantages of single responsibility principle is by the fact that components become smaller and therefore easier to maintain. It is also easier to reuse components that are small and have one specific responsibility. Those are indications when the single responsibility principle is not kept and the component is doing too many things. Uh, the first indication is that there are too many inputs and flags and the other indication is that the tests are very long. Second guideline, composition. The idea behind composition is that in order to achieve functionality, you should combine multiple components. The code is broken into several composable components and the parent component is responsible for orchestrating the components and sharing information between them. The advantages of composition is that uh, it's easier to test functionality when you test each and every aspect of it separately, and also it is allows to replace single parts of a functionality easily if it is encapsulated on its own component. Reusability. 
aim to reduce repeated code. Introduce shared components for common functionality and use it across the system. You gain components that have the same look and feel everywhere they are used and also the common functionality is tested only once. Single level of abstraction. The clean code guideline says that all statements of a method should belong to the same level of abstraction. If you take this guideline into UI code, it means that a single component should not mix custom components, HTML elements, and basic components. Let's take a look at a code example and see how we can apply those guidelines into the component hierarchy of the episode result component. So this is the code of uh, the episode result page if everything is in a single component. It's hard to read in a presentation and also it's hard to read and maintain in real life. So let's see how we can improve it by applying the guidelines that um, we've discussed earlier. The highlighted code is focused on presenting and updating the results in a single obstacle. We should apply the single responsibility principle and encapsulate into its own dedicated component. So this will be the uh, obstacle result component. Looking into the page code right now, it's uh, better, uh, but we can improve it more. You can see highlighted the logic for uh, rendering the candidate selection control. However, uh, we can see here that there is a mix between basic components and custom components. That's an indication we should introduce another layer of abstraction. So, as you can see here, we have a dedicated component for the candidate selection and also a dedicated component for presenting results in a specific obstacle. This parent component also demonstrates composition. Uh, the entire functionality is composed by multiple components and also the parent is responsible for updating the obstacle result whenever the candidate selection changes. We can apply reusability inside the uh, obstacle result component. The start time and end time are actually the same functionality. They both require an input of minutes and seconds, so uh, I've introduced a dedicated component, which is the duration picker. It is used twice, however, the logic for validating the input format is in a single uh, shared place. The last guideline is presentation versus container. This is the life cycle of an average web page. First, uh, the page load the data, then the page present the data, get user input, and store the updated data. Let's drill down into loading the data. You first need to get the identifier from the router, then invoke several API requests to get the data. You need to wait for the result and maybe later invoke additional cascading API requests and eventually need to handle failures. Saving the data can also get complex. Sometimes there is a logic to decide whether it will be a create API request or update API request, and of course need to handle failures. When the logic for uh, loading the data and storing the data is complex, the recommendation is to split between container component and presentation component. The container component, which is also referred to as a smart component, is responsible for interacting with the bigger application, for loading and storing data, interacting with the router and state management. It's basically phase uh, one and four in the page life cycle. The presentation component, which is also referred to as the DAM component, is responsible for presenting the data to the user and receiving user updates, which is the phase two and three in the page life cycle. In this example, you can see a presentation component for the 
uh, episode result page and you can see that all the data is received as inputs. Later on, this component will emit events to the parent whenever the data changes. So, presentation and container shouldn't be uh, applied to every component. It is useful, as I said earlier, when the data for loading and saving the information is complex, and also when the same presentation is reused with different data sources. For example, a table component will usually be a presentation on the component since it allows uh, presenting various data sources in a table structure. To summarize, uh, these are the guidelines and best practices that I find useful. Single responsibility principle of composition, reusability, single level of abstraction, and presentation versus container. I would also say that applying guidelines is an iterative process. Usually, when a component is being created, it is uh, according to all the guidelines state of the art. However, it is being uh, extended little by little and sometimes it's possible that you didn't notice and the component is no longer uh, keeping the single responsibility or single level of abstraction principles. So it is important to know that and make sure to refactor your component from time to time to make sure it is uh, indeed easy to maintain and easy to reuse. If you have any additional questions, you are welcome to contact me on LinkedIn. Also, if you have any additional best practices that are important when designing the component hierarchy of a web application, I would love to learn about them, so write to me as well on LinkedIn. Thank you very much for listening.